Casey Kamenaga twice, and both times it's been a major issue. Um, what does he do that's just so um, hard to stop out there? Um, well, his, his quick release on his jump shot uh, is one of the most unstoppable uh, shots that he has. Uh, but he also is a smart player. You know, let's give him credit. You know, the young, young man has a high IQ, uh, knows how to, you know, knowing that team scout where we try to get him off the three-point line and, you know, he, he can handle the basketball where he's able to, of course, get downhill, whether you are uh, have to guard his drive or have to guard his three-point shot. You know, he's, he's figured out a way to try to keep himself effective out there on the floor. And then just the constant moving, you know, without the basketball. You know, that's, uh, that takes a lot of work, effort, uh, as well as uh, the way to give to the team uh, to make you effective out there on the floor that the other four guys have to always honor you. Andrew? You, you did have one basket with, uh, I think it was a little over four minutes left in the game. You called timeout right after he, he took the inbounds and he just went coast to coast for a layup. But I, I don't know if you remember that particular. Yes, I do. Like, I mean, yeah, that, that can't happen, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, you know, not to cut you off, but, no. you know, th those plays should never happen. And, and that was one of the blow buys that was very disappointing when you. You know, we had five blow buys that we gave up in the first half, and then five blow buys in the second half. And you know, calling that timeout is because you know that was a lack of communication. Where uh, you know, have a guy in front, we always have to declare who's taking the ball when the guys bring the ball to the floor. And one teammate did not communicate. The other teammate did not communicate who's close to him. And one guy felt like, well, I thought you had him. No, no, I thought you had him. You know, that's the part of lack of communication where, you know, cause the breakdown. We cannot have those type of possessions where we've worked on it, you know, throughout the week and we worked on it throughout the season, worked on it throughout the summer. And it was very disappointing uh, to, to allow that possession to, uh, to occur. In the front with Tom? Yeah, Joel, I think it was three or four weeks ago. I can't remember what game. You had questioned the, the players' buy-in at the time. It says it's not just the coaches, but the, the players at the buy-in. How would you as, assess the players' buy-in right now in this losing skid and where we're at right now? Well, that's, in basketball, it's still always you know, learning that happens. And I would say, you know, like players and coaches, you know, those always, you know, moments where you have to, of course, grow. You grow with your players. Uh, there are moments where you take them in practice and whether you show it you know, through a drill you're doing or whether you show it on film. Um, and I will always continue to keep teaching our guys about the game of basketball and how you can grow and become, you know, a winning team. But it also has to take, you know, the buy-in from everyone has to get uncomfortable accepting it. Um, so we're going to continue to keep coaching them up, keep teaching. Uh, we're looking forward to, uh, we leave Tuesday for Wednesday's matchup. We don't know who we play yet. Looking forward to playing a, a new season, which is in the Big Ten tournament, and it's always one game, and that's we're gonna focus on one game. Back in the middle with Jennifer. Joanne, I know you still obviously have some more games to play, but just the from the Elite Eight in 2021 and kind of the progression of where you are to this season, how far away do you think this team is from getting back to three years ago, and how challenging is that job? looking ahead for next year? Well, 2021, yeah, you're right. We went to Elite Eight. 2022, we went to Sweet 16. And uh, we had you know, a disappointing year where we didn't make the tournament last year. Um, had to, now, you know, we still get an opportunity and a chance to make the tournament. Uh, we played a Big Ten uh, tournament, which starts, like, like I mentioned, on Wednesday for us. Um, we are going we'll to look at it one game at a time. And uh, this season is not over, by no means. Follow up. Go ahead. If for fans, for people who think that Michigan basketball should be winning more than it does, do you? How do you defend the job you've done and, and what you want to do with this team in the future? Well, first it starts with uh, the players and staff. You know, we're, we're all of us have felt like you know this hasn't been the season that we wanted, um, but like the season, like I said earlier, is not. You know, over. You still have more season to be played. Um, it's been a, a disappointing Big Ten regular season for us at three and seventeen. Um, and it is. I know that a lot of our fans want more. So do we. And we're gonna continue to keep grinding in the gym, uh, keep working to get better. 
Um, and then, you know, at, at the season end, we will evaluate and see areas of where we have to improve on in order to get back to that, what we all been used to, is uh, having a very competitive team that, you know, with an opportunity to win a national championship. Jake? Namari, Terrence, and Jackson were just speaking about a little bit ago, despite the poor season, how they've been able to grow as young men still outside of basketball, they, and they really attributed you to helping with that. How have you seen your seniors grow into young men outside of basketball, despite, you know, in battling some adversity this season? Well, see, that's what the beauty of, like, coaching. You know, you're not just coaching them how to become a better basketball player, the best version of themselves as a student athlete on the floor. You're also growing them as young men uh, to become the best version of themselves just through and through. Uh, and what does that mean? Like, as a person, like, you know, there's, there's times where, you know, like, we all come from different backgrounds and get to know one another, uh, whether mom and dad's name, which is the small things, but it's, it's so important when you talk about relationships, um, inviting them over your house, which I've done before, and uh, getting the chance to just not even talk about basketball, just talk about life lessons. Um, having you know team functions, whether it's at a bowling alley or um, hanging out and watching the Super Bowl, you know those fun times. You know those are the moments where you really grow, um, and those are the moments when you look back on when you get my age that I remember when I was a student athlete here. When I had my head coach and assistant coaches, you know, spending time with them and getting to know them, and still to this day, you know, having a personal relationship, um, and those—that's what you know. This is the beauty of coaching is that for me, you know, I, that I enjoy the most on the collegiate level is the connection and the relationships. And so we will continue. Uh, every young man that I get an opportunity to touch is going to be more than just about basketballs. Um, and I'm going to learn from them. They're going to learn a lot about me and my family, and, and they're going to see about how we care about more than just what the wins and losses. Uh, got one more for you, Coach Tony. Yeah, and you, you're talking about more than the wins and losses, and, and thinking about what, how how your season started personally uh, with the the heart surgery. I guess speaking of maybe the perspective that you've gained, uh, maybe with this a season like this have been even harder to take. I'm sure it's extremely hard as, as it is, but just when you look at sort of the big picture of life. Well, I mean, it's been a, a very strange year and a very strange season, yes. You know, and it started back in the summer when I found out that I had to go and, you know, have a open heart surgery. And, you know, from there, I, I didn't get an opportunity to be myself and to be on the floor teaching. Um, you know, each and every day, you know, thinking about, you know, when you have an aneurysm, what day is going to burst, but knowing that you're taking medicine to hopefully prevent it from that day ever happening. And then you have a surgery and, you know, you go through that of, you know, of not being with your team and being in the hospital for those days and thinking about just, you know, how I can get back, you know, you know, getting myself uncomfortable on, and what is that, what does that mean? Um, you're talking, uh, with the rehab of, you know, just learning how to walk again. And, and then after that, you know, elevating, you know, seeing the growth of my health improving week after week. And yeah, there were a couple setbacks here and there, but I'm not gonna get into the details of that. But what it, it gained, helped me gain was that perspective of this, that I'm gonna keep forging ahead because I know that my teammate, my team, as well as my staff needs me. And I'm not going to quit on them because uh, that's not how I operate. That's, I never did quit anything in life. And we have a season to play and knowing that, yeah, I, I'm going to give everything I can to this university as to my team as well as my staff because these are the people I love. I love everything about this school. I love everything about you know my job. I really appreciate Ward Manuel taking a chance on me and um, giving me this opportunity by being a head coach with no collegiate head coaching experience, but at the same time, trusting the vision. And we're going to grind like no other this summer to work on getting better and getting back to where we've all, uh, as a lot of the Michigan fans, uh, basketball fans I'm speaking of, been used to, and that's winning. Uh, but this year right here alone, we have learned a lot. I feel we have won in a lot of ways. Uh, 
And uh, with that, uh, I'm very appreciative of getting the opportunity to coach again. Because uh, I never know if I was going to ever have that chance to be able to be uh, the coach for this year. I could easily just at, at some point say, you know what? Uh, it's important that I take care of my health, which I was, and I will continue to keep doing. Uh, I could have set the season out, but that's not how I'm wired. Uh, I felt this team and this, this staff needs me, and I need them too. All right.